Welcome to a short video that's part of our brilliant NHS programme. The aim is simple, to make the NHS a great place to work. Now that requires fabulous people with energy and motivation and a common purpose, which is easy for me to say, but actually quite difficult to achieve. So we're here to give you a leg up, whether that's training on site, online, or like this one, via a short video. This one's called Putting the Civil into Civility. Enjoy. One of the key ingredients of health and social care, in fact, the key ingredient, certainly the ingredient that binds everything else together, drum roll, have we got a budget? Thank you. Civility. Civility, honestly, yeah, I had to look it up. Polite, respectful, gracious, that kind of thing, which is kind of what I thought. So civil engineers, I'm guessing they must be really nice engineers with really good manners. Civil partnerships, civil servants, civil liberties, civilization, all good, all positive as far as I can see. So civil is good, but then you can have a civil war and all of a sudden it gets a bit murky. What, a polite war? What are you gonna do, kill people nicely? Confused? You needn't be. Let's cut through all the other meanings and give it to you in its simplest form. Wars aside, civility refers to the act of being nice, kind and polite. And in these modern crazy times, in the health service particularly, where pressures are immense, I think we might need a reminder, a nudge. Because amid the craziness and the hurly-burliness, the strain can begin to tell. Even the really nice people, you know, your halo can slip. The milk of human kindness can sometimes be a bit, I don't know, semi-skimmed. Even if you manage to bite your tongue at work, all sweetness and light, and hold it all in till you get home, and somebody quite innocently dares to ask, how was your day? And that's it. You unleash all that pent-up frustration on your family. Oh my gosh, you wouldn't believe what kind of day I've had. It's no wonder I can't do my own job. I'm covering everybody else. I'm like a blue arse fly. Familiar? Call it a lucky guess. So we've done a civility two-parter. This one is the intro. So what is it? Why is it important? And what on earth has it got to do with you? Part two throws a few how-tos at you. Nothing new, just a gentle reminder. So I'll try and keep it moving. You'll have to enjoy my, endure my sense of humour, but it's from here, pretty much. And the aim is to help make the NHS and social care brilliant places to work. And of course, the aim is to make this video interesting, engaging and motivating. So where would we start if that's what we're trying to achieve? How about superheroes? Because contrary to what Marvel and DC tell you, not all superheroes wear capes. They often wear aprons, tabards, white coats, badges, sensible work shoes, uniforms, oh, and PPE. Yeah, lots of PPE. And they don't carry a shield of destiny or a sword of truth. They carry a mop or a clipboard or a cup of tea or a stethoscope. And they don't rock up in a Batmobile and they don't fly to work. They have a car or a bike. Some superheroes, I've seen them on the bus. The truth is that everyone is a superhero, genuinely, and especially in health and social care, creating an environment, a workplace where people leave healed, their pain eased, they're fixed, they're patched up, they're mended, they're cured, you've got hope, you've got dignity, or simply with their suffering behind them. So first base is this, you are all superheroes. It's time to stop pretending to be normal. Civility, back to that word, niceness, kindness, being a lovely person. I think civility is a modern day superpower. In fact, kindness is probably the ultimate special power. It not only enhances lives, it actually saves them. I promise you, it's true. I'll spare you the academic papers. I've read them precisely so you don't have to. Here's the headline news. Let's start in the operating room. So here are the bare numbers, right? So a polite surgeon will get the theatre team working at about 91% of expected outcome. A rude surgeon will get 63% out of exactly the same team. As a patient, I prefer my team to be on top form. I don't want to be a 60%. I don't want to be waking up halfway through my operation or worse still, not waking up at all. Maternity, same story. Rudeness affects diagnosis and treatment. It impairs both. Here are the stats. When rudeness happens, 80% of maternity staff waste time worrying about it. They're angry, which means they're on 61% less brain power. Imagine your baby being coaxed out by a midwife on 61% less brain power. <sighs> Here's another stat that has some darkly comic humour. If a colleague is rude or short with you, 25% of staff admit to taking it out on their patients. So hang on, I'm getting my appendix whipped out a little more aggressively than usual by a surgeon who's angry because a member of staff was rude to her 15 minutes earlier. 
Ooh, that's dark humour indeed. Nursing. The evidence is clear that a new nurse or a carer entering a bad environment where there's rudeness and a lack of warmth, they leave either that ward or that hospital or that care home or indeed the entire profession. What a waste. Driven out not by the workload but by the atmosphere. In toxic workplaces, there's a lot of graphs going up. Sick days are up, pressure's up, employees' absences up, stress is up, workloads up, errors up. True story. I did some training last month about well-being, and everyone on the course was stressed because they're covering for all the other staff who were off with stress. So workload had become an issue. And to be clear, there was enough staff to do the jobs, but with so many off and so many agency staff covering those who were off that the ones who were not off were about to go off. Whew, the truth, that exact same department with all people firing on all cylinders would have smashed their targets with a smile. Calm yourself. Right, this is particularly important because of who you are. If you worked in a shop or in a motorway service station or in a coffee shop, rudeness there, it's not going to harm me physically. It's just going to annoy me. So here's your not so gentle reminder. You are not those people. Incivility is a crime against good healthcare. In the NHS and care sectors, the stats back me up. Incivility costs lives. My own research, not health service, but based in the public sector. Let's look at the opposite. So if incivility is bad, it just so happens it works the opposite way. Civility is good. So a workplace where people are nice and kind and respectful, appreciative, friendly, warm, cooperative, not only is that a nicer place to be, so you're more likely to have many more good days, but you'll also take that niceness back home with you. So your family benefit from your good day. Plus, happy people are more productive, more creative, more energetic, they get more done, they give better customer service, they create stronger relationships, tell me when you get bored, they get promoted faster, they do better teamwork, they make better decisions. And in the business sense, the bottom line is this, that well-being and civility is the bottom line. If you apply all of that into the health service setting, better diagnosis, better care, better aftercare, a greater place to work, and it's even bigger than that. Civility will stretch your budget further, but dun, 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 it's even bigger than that. Happier patients get better quicker. It all adds up to lives saved. So yes, niceness isn't just nice to have. Niceness actually saves lives. I told you it was a superpower. Now, the chances are you're already a lovely person. I don't doubt it for a second. I'm just bringing to your attention that it's bigger than you ever imagined. So I'm gonna pause for an activity in a minute, but before that, let's have a look at what civility isn't. So I'm absolutely not asking you to be all jazz hands and nicey-nicey and pretending to be civil when you're boiling with rage inside. And this is not about rolling over for a tummy tickle. This is not agreeing with everything and smiling through terrible times. It's okay to not be okay. And if you're genuinely having a hard time then, or being talked to in a demeaning manner or being verbally bullied or disrespected, there are ways and means of addressing that professionally and appropriately. There are channels, there are guidelines. So these instances and these people, they need challenging. So patient safety issues need challenging. Morale issues need challenging. I guess that's where the real benefit of a culture of civility kicks in. So mutual respect, an environment of positivity where everyone is committed to being their best self is about never settling for second best. In teams that get this right, the conversations are positive. The challenges aren't seen as negative. You're never attacking a person or a department. You're part of a positive change revolution that has the customer experience at its heart. That, folks, is a bigger few sentences than it sounds. Maybe play it back. Meantime, thinking time. Let's have a go at an activity. So something quick and easy. So if you're watching this in a group, you can have a natter for 10 minutes, press pause. If you're watching it at home, online, then have a chat with yourself, whatever. I want you to have a really good think about this and jot some ideas down. There's something called, that I call the dog and duck test. So you've got to imagine those two men on a Friday night having a beer in the pub and one of the guys has either been a patient or a visitor to your workplace and has interacted with your service and you. So the guys are clinking glasses, cheers fella, how was your week? And that patient or visitor says, oh mate, unbelievable. I had to go to the hospital yesterday or I had to visit my old dad in Ward 32. Incredible, what a service. Mate, it was beyond five stars. If there were six stars, I would have given it six. This is what happened. 
I want you to pause the video and finish that story. Have that chat, write it down, describe that patient or visitor experience. What happened for it to be six stars? How was he treated and greeted? Attitude, what care, what environment? What did that customer see, hear and feel when interacting with your service and with you? What part did you play? So take a few minutes. I'll be waiting here for when you're done. Okay, look, thanks ever so much for taking time out to do that activity. If I was to second guess, I'd say that the medical care was awesome and prompt. And you talked about the environment, which was clean and tidy. But I would imagine it would be much more than that. The experience you just talked about was about civility and kindness and positivity and attitude and extra mile stuff. That, you see, is your team at its best. And it's you at your best. And that's the bit we want to help you with. It boils down to this. I want you to care with a passion. And for that passion to show in your body language, in your face, in your effort, in your habits, in your communication, in your attitude. And if things aren't right, I want you to be able to voice your concerns and challenge in the right way. Because the truth is that it's easy to slip into doing, doing things the wrong way. So look, I get it. I genuinely get that what you do is full on, it's relentless, it's high pressure. But being rude or sharp or impatient or condescending or gossiping or obstructive or consistently negative or just in a grumpy mood, these things are not just bad for you. They lower the tone of your workplace and remember the stats from a few minutes ago. Through the various levers and social transmissions, they actually cost lives. <sighs> okay, phew. That's me done for part one. I'm going to have a lie down, all right? The simple but important message, it was supposed to be in just an introduction, a reminder that your attitude is infectious. Oh, infectious, is that the right word? Contagious, is that better or worse? I'm not sure. But actually, in terms of emotions, both of those are correct. You cannot not have an impact. People are going to catch how you feel. So civility makes perfect sense at work and at home. I'll see you in part two for some how-tos. Because yes, being a lovely human being is important, but how can we shine in a world that's hell-bent on knocking us sideways? And how can we turn up our civility dial a notch or two? That'll be worth coming back for. So I'll see you in part two.